Evening Hot Dado Podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dead Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, as always, the not quite sure what I'm doing today, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dead Out. You can find me at odddeadoutpodcast.com and at Odd Dead Out on all the social media places. And this is a show where I ramble and rant and empty my brain out and, and, and just whatever, you know, because my brain is just chaos. And I tell you about a podcast to listen to because sharing is caring. And I figured, man, maybe I'll just keep going with that. You know, trademarks be damned. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. How's it going? So, I guess I should, for those of you who are not in the Oddballs group on Facebook, which you should be, you should join the group and 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 chat along with the other weirdos that are crazy enough to listen to me. But I posted up the other day kind of asking about if you've noticed, if you're one of those people who pays attention to release schedules of podcasts and when shows drop and all those sort of things, um, ask, you know, do you have a problem with the fact that basically since uh, the new year, I've started dropping shows on Fridays? And it's, it's, it's part laziness and it's part busy and it's part work. And it's kind of weird because of the whole, just like so much of everything right now just revolves around new house and new vibe and new everything. And so it is, it's, it's, it's all that big thing. And it's like a lot of what I was talking about last week, how, you know, coming back and sitting down in the office is so much more of a commitment than it was in the old house because it was in my bedroom. And so, I don't know, it just feels different. It's like I come back here and I'm I'm secluded away and I'm I'm hiding in my little hidey hole back here in my office. And and so, I don't know, it's it's weird. Like, I'm not that I don't want to do the show, but for some reason, I'm, I'm, when I, I, it's time to do the show, I don't want to go back and sit down and, and hide back at my desk and work. And I don't know. I think it's just, it's just me getting used to having the office. I have not done a lot of editing work since we've been here. Most of everything I've been working on wrapped up just before the new year. And so a lot of like, editing client stuff. And a lot of that's just been on break. So I haven't done a lot of editing work. I haven't done a lot of work outside of just doing the show um, since we've been in this house. So I haven't like had that vibe of sit down, work, you know, go in the office, you know, sit down and get to it. And so I think that's it. I think I just need to kind of get more into the vibe of sit down, you know, go in here, sit down, work and, and get into that sort of energy that my desk is still a mess and it's still like I I still haven't like put my office together you know my guitars are still sitting on the floor over there I still got boxes of crap over here that need to get put up stuff that needs to get unpacked it's just not done and I think that's a big part of it is that like this room is incomplete and I feel like until I'm I've got it done and 100 percent mine and complete and I it's not like, you know, I, I I hate to use the term man cave because it's so fucking stupid. I hate man the idea of a man cave, but it's it's my office, and it needs to it needs to it's my one room of the house that's mine. Like, I'm not doing jack shit in our bedroom. If my wife want whatever my wife wants to do in our bedroom or the bathroom or the whole master suite area have at it, whatever she wants to do. And really most of the house, if she like, she's got free reign of we're decorating this, we're putting this here. This is what we're doing. This is what's going on for the rest of the house. This one room is mine. And it's again, not the man cave thing, 
but just because it's my office and really nobody else has business back here. Nobody else needs to come in here. Nobody else needs to do anything in here. So really, it's just, a, you know, this is where all of my shit gets to live because all of my shit's been in boxes for years. So I can come back here and I can hang up my guitars and I can put up and like the fact that, again, I have my desk and all my recording equipment's here and all my work stuff business wise is back here. This is where I do business and this is where I do my stuff. But me being back here, it's like me leaving the house area again because it's separated off from really from everywhere else. It's like me leaving the area and coming up here and it's like, okay, I'm going to work and I'm going to work way up at the front of the house away from everybody. And other than texting me, you're not going to be able to talk to me back here. It's not like when we're in the living room and the boys are in their bedrooms and we're like, hey, uh, let the dog out. <laughs> hey, uh, come pick this up. Can't do that up here, really. Like, I mean, you could, you have to really yell for me to get, hear you in here, especially with the door closed. And so, yeah, it's, it's very much a, I come up here and I'm going to work. I'm going into the studio. I'm going into the whatever. I still need to finish my booth. Like I, I hung up blankets, but I still need to, to finish padding out my booth. Um, you know, stuff like that. I just, there's stuff I need to do to finish this room. And it's funny because the things I want to do, a lot of stuff I want to do, like I want to pad the walls a little more, but I'm, yeah, I've basically already been told, no, you're not padding the walls, <laughs> but stuff like putting up my, my cork board. Um, did I mention last week I've got my cork board? Yeah, the, by putting up my cork board with my stickers and magnets and stuff behind me, which is nice. Um, again, hanging my guitars, putting up stuff. Um, because this is the office office space, I, we're going to get a file cabinet for, you know, records and things like that, you know, insurance papers, house papers, tax stuff, all, you know, getting a file cabinet, getting, just getting some stuff in here to finish off this room. But, you know, it's, it's just one of those, it's not done yet. That's it. It's, it's the office isn't done yet. I mean, as a whole, I mean, there's still bookshelves and things to put up and all this stuff in the rest of the house. And so like, it, it's not like it, it was already kind of established the last room in the house. that's going to get finished is the office, but it would be nice if my office was a little more finished. Cause I just, it's, it feels like it's a mess. And I realize it's my fault that it's a mess. But it's also a matter of I don't come up here unless I'm working. And so I don't like come back in here and really commit myself to a lot of time in here. Like the longest time I spent in here doing something for the office and not like recording related or work related was hanging the curtains or putting up my magnet board. That's it. I don't spend a lot of time in here like sorting out stuff. And I think it's because if I come in here, any other circumstance, if I come in here, Anyone's like, where'd dad go? Cause I'm not in the living room. I'm not in the bedroom or wherever. And so it turns into, where's dad? Is he outside? Where'd he go? Did he leave? Did he go to the store? It's like, no, I'm just in the fucking office. <laughs> I'm just way up at the front of the house, up in the office, you know, that room up there that's mine. But yeah, <laughs> I, but I need to do it. I need to sit down and really like figure out where I'm going to put stuff and hang stuff and do stuff and blah, blah, and do all the things. And so I need to do that. But, you know, that's like, that is my, what is going on with me update? Da, da, da. Um, <laughs> this is, this has been one of those, like a big, again, like the me doing the shows later in the week, not releasing Wednesdays. Again, part laziness, part distraction, and also part, like not knowing what to talk about because especially with the, okay, I just did the show. You know, when I do the show late one week, well, I haven't had a lot of shit go on since then. <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. But, um, like if, if I do the show Friday for me to then have something, I, I normally I'm building shit up in the what's gone on in my week since then. And I really don't have a lot. Um, you know, from Friday to Wednesday, not a lot necessarily may happen. And so I'm kind of stuck in that. What am I going to talk about? <laughs> I really don't know. And I, I get to 
Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I'm like, well, fuck, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I talking about this week? Especially removing the news that removes a big chunk of ideas of brain stimulation. And that's the one thing I will say that the news has always done is given me something to bullshit about. Even if I don't cover it, but it gives me something to, it sparks my brain to think about other bullshit. But I, it was funny because I was sitting there thinking this week, well, what the fuck am I going to talk about? What am I talking about? Completely blanking the fact that this week is Valentine's Day. <laughs> and my wife, if you've listened to mom and dad cuss ever, or you've heard, if you listen back to way back when she would come in and do guest spots and be on the show with me or whatever, if you've ever heard my wife on the show or whatever you've done, which was a lot easier way of saying all that bullshit I just said, but I, you would realize my wife is, um, I'm not going to say she's high maintenance, but I'm not going to say she's not. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. But she is the kind of person where, you know, we've been married for 10 years, but she's still like, are you going to ask me to be your Valentine? Like, what are you getting me for Valentine's? That's also the big thing with her. She's also the big, uh, what are you getting me person? Because she hates surprises. She hates fucking surprises. And so if you're going to get her something, you know, she'd rather see the fucking receipt for it. No, it's like, yeah, I'm getting this. This is coming. Ha 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 ha. She'd rather know what's coming. She'd rather know what she's getting. She hates fucking surprises. I'm that asshole who likes surprises. And so I like surprising her. So it makes it very difficult if I ever do want to get her something. Not that I never want to get her anything. But again, she doesn't like surprises. And we've established over 10 years of birthdays and mother's days and valentines and holidays and blah 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 all the things that you are required to get gifts for that there are not a lot of things i can actually get her especially for a holiday like valentine's day because valentine's day gifts basically fall into three categories flowers chocolates and stuffed animals that's it those are basically all like and and when you are in a relationship like when you're in a committed relationship dinner is basically a given you there is no out for dinner so you have to do dinner and then there's flowers chocolates and stuffed animals well again 10 years of of being together and again all of the different holidays were like valentine's uh, mother's day anniversaries are all flowers chocolate stuffed animals great anniversaries and birthdays you also get the bigger gifts and, oh, you're going to get her a diamond ring. No fucking way. I don't have that kind of money. Although I did buy her a, a I believe it was a heart pendant with a diamond chip, which was really not expensive, but it was real diamond and it was real gold, but it was very not expensive. But it was the closest thing to buying my wife a diamond I've ever been able to do because diamonds and gold are expensive. And oh, yeah, she doesn't like gold anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, diamonds are expensive. and. Um, if you want to dig into the, they're unnecessarily expensive because they're not in short supply. Da, 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 they're just a controlled demand thing. Diamonds aren't that rare. They're just strictly controlled by the people who have a vested interest in keeping them expensive. Okay. I'm not going to dig any more into that. If you know anything about mining diamonds and shit. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, weird conspiracy, not even conspiracy, factual thing. Yeah, price control is a thing. Anyway, but diamonds are expensive and uh, I'm I'm too I I'm financially what's it? I'm not cheap. I'm just I'm very practical with things. And so I don't spend a lot of money unnecessarily. Which is which is a stark uh, conflict with the fact that I'm a guy who likes gadgets and toys and things. Like I could buy 10 more microphones. I mean there's microphones I want I need to buy for voiceover stuff and stuff like that to work that but there's also just the like i i, I want to buy gadgets and i want to buy things and i want to buy audio plugins and i want to buy effects and i want to buy goodies and toys and doodads and things and gadgets and gizmos and odds and ends and all those other sorts of things i love toys i love having no new shit to play with like i want to get an art tablet for the computer so that I can work on graphic design stuff, which would force me to stay back here in the office more. Hell, I want to get a bigger fucking monitor now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> like, you know, 
like a really good investment right now is just get a nice big fucking monitor. Get a big fucking monitor. That's what I want to do. But I can't justify the expense. I have a monitor. It works. Does what I need to. Don't need to get a bigger one. Need is that big word. And so we don't need, I don't need to spend thousands of dollars on diamond whatever for my wife. She would like me to because she likes presents. Because, well, again, she's not high maintenance, but she's not, not high maintenance, but she likes shiny things. And so she would like me to get her nice shiny things. But my practical financial why, why spend the money? Even when I want to spend the money, my brain goes, I can't justify the expense. It's the same reason I don't have more than just the one tattoo I have. I'd love to get more tattoos, but the one tattoo I have was literally paid on credit because the tattoo artist that did it owed us money. (laughs) Uh, Long story short, he was my sister's ex, or now he's my sister's ex, but he was, uh, they had borrowed some money from us at one point for stuff. And he owed us some money. And instead of just giving us, he like, we were going to get tattoos done. It was like, here, just do the tattoos off, you know, and we'll call it, you know, we'll call it even. Basically, he owed us a good chunk of money. Really good. Okay. Tattoos call it even. Um, which realistically in my favor works out very well because I have a full rib piece. If you've ever seen my tattoo, if you've ever seen that picture, it's in the show notes from the unnumbered, actually. And I think about it. Um, if you go back and I'll, I'll talk, maybe get into this a little bit to the episode called the incident, the, which is very relevant this week, um, to the story of the robbery where I was attacked. And, and maybe I'll get into this a little more later. I don't know. But if you had, if you ever go back and look at that, um, there's a picture of my tattoo and then the picture that inspired that tattoo uh, in the show notes there. But it is a full rib piece, you know, goes wraps around, you know, front and back, all that stuff. And this probably was like a thousand dollar tattoo. I imagine, I don't know the rate of tattoos, but I know it took six hours to do. And, you know, just me laying there and my arm going numb and my like, eh, and having to readjust and move my arm back and forth and do all the things. And, you know, I was there when it comes to tattoos, I was like, oh, yeah, go big or go home. And my sisters who have a bunch of tattoos, uh, were all like, like, yeah, you know, your first tattoo, your only tattoo so far, and you're going to get it in the single most painful place that it is for getting a tattoo. Like, and the fact that I'm really, was especially then, you know, it was about five, six years ago, um, much skinnier at the time. So really, he's tattooing basically actually on my ribs. Like, you know, I'm stretched out arms over my head so that he can work. And you could, you could probably play my ribs like the xylophone fish things in The Little Mermaid. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, and I, I can't justify spending the money. Even when I want to. <laughs> but yeah, with Valentine's coming up and she wants, she's like, oh, you know, well, uh, I think I'm going to take the half a day for work because, you know, I can be home and we can spend more time together. And I'm like, okay, but why? Because in my brain, I'm again, my super practical, let's be real about this. If she comes home from work early. <laughs> She's probably going to come home and take a nap. Why? Because I fucking would. It's pretty much established. Anytime that she'd have the day off or take, get out earlier. It's like, we take the opportunity to rest. Really? That's just it. Why? Because we don't necessarily get a lot of opportunities to just take a nap because kids, because, you know, home adult parent obligations. So yeah, I thoroughly expect she comes home and nap. Even if it turns into like we sit on the couch and we're like, oh, we're going to just watch a movie together and and, like we're going to fall asleep on the couch. Really? This is it. And on top of that, you know, if, if she gets out of work at noon, she gets home or just before one, that's nap time. I'm probably going to be asleep 
or I may actually be back here, but <laughs> like it, it's just going to be, she's going to come home during nap time. And then after nap time is go pick up the boys from school time. So it's really just like, eh, I don't know. But I, and I understand, you know, wanting to uh, you know, spend more time together, especially on Valentine's day. But again, I'm, I'm just that like, but we're not going to really get to appreciate the time. So I don't see the point. And that's just me. Like, we're not going to be able to really spend any time together. We're not going to be able to appreciate the extra little bit of time because it's going to go from, okay, she gets home. There's maybe an hour. Go pick up the boys. Boys get home. Then it's after school bullshit <laughs> and making dinner for the boys and doing a, the after school bullshit. Just, ah. And so I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm, I, it's not that I don't want her to come home. It's that I, I, I don't see us being able to get any value out of that time just because of the situation and the timing and weekdays and school bullshit and, you know, rowdy kids and kids are kind of assholes. So, you know, life. And so again, my practical brain, it was like, but yeah, but so yeah, I just, again, spending money. <laughs> And again, back to the whole flowers, chocolate, uh, stuffed animals thing. Again, 10 years of buying flowers for so many events and so many holidays. Our cats eat the flowers. Just it. Um, if you have a cat, you know that if you ever get rose, especially roses, uh, cats will eat roses. Period. They will. It's the end. Cats eat roses. And so I will. You know, I would multiple times I've gone and bought flowers and I'll, you know, because of the whole working overnight, I will set them next to her on the bed, like on her side table. She'll wake up in the morning and the cats will be eating her flowers. <laughs> and she's just gotten to a point of, and then the fact that like they last a couple of days, then they die and you just throw them away. And so it's kind of turned into, yeah, it's, it's no more flowers. They're like, okay, no more flowers. Okay. Step two, chocolate. She doesn't like chocolate. <laughs> now, there are some she might eat, but she does generally, unless she has a craving for a specific thing at a time, she doesn't like chocolate. She doesn't want chocolate. She won't eat it. If I gave her the giant, I think Russell Stover variety box, you know, the giant twice the size of your head chocolate box, she won't eat it. It will sit on the shelf and go bad. So, chocolate's off the board <laughs> and l let's just say we have enough stuffed animals to open up our own toy store like we have at least three garbage bags full of stuffed animals in the garage right now that we need to bring inside and and put away in the like we got those uh hanging basket things to put all the stuffed animals in and we need to still have three bags of them out in the garage to bring in on top of the, all of the boys have two baskets in their bedrooms that are stuffed with animals, <laughs> stuffed animals. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, leave me alone. <laughs> but I, I'm left with the don't know what to get her again, short of a diamond. And then again, can't justify the expense and can't hide that expense because Again, diamonds are expensive. And so if I went and bought jewelry or something, it'd be a big red flag. It's like, what'd you spend all this money on? And we just bought a house and we're still buying shit and paying shit and fixing shit and, and doing things and needing to spend money again, like file cabinets and, and picture frames and shit that we need to spend money on for the house to make the house complete. We still got to do all that. And so like, I, I can't just out of nowhere spend money on jewelry. And again, she doesn't really wear jewelry. So like, what the fuck am I going to spend? <laughs> what am I going to get her? And so, and, and again, I'm not the big like holiday gift givey. Like I'm not the big romantic one. I'm really not. Like, And I, I've told her before, like, I'm sorry. If you want the big lavish uh, Valentine's day basket with like spend hundreds of dollars on you every holiday, you married the wrong brother. My brother is the 
guy who will go out and spend $200 on a Valentine's gift basket with a giant teddy bear and fucking gold wrapped chocolates and all the bullshit. He, he will do that. He did that for like, even for girls, he just barely started dating. He'd spend tons of money on him. He's just, that's him. He's the big flower arrangement guy. That's my brother. Me? No, I'm much more practical. I appreciate spending time together or doing something that we can together, we can whatever. And, you know, sitting down, having a nice dinner. Um, I'm like, yeah, I like giving gifts. But again, practical. I was like, if she's not going to like it, if she's not going to appreciate the gift, I'm not going to waste my time or money to give her a gift that she's just not going to like. Or really be like, oh, okay. I'm not going to give her a gift that she's just kind of meh. <laughs> Especially after 10 years and we're like, yeah, she's just going to be kind of meh. <laughs> Even though she did say there's never a bad time for stuffed animals, the three garbage bags in the garage right now would beg to differ. So I don't know. It it may result in, and again, you're going to be hearing this after she's got it. So <laughs> she'll, you know, it's probably going to result in more stuffed animals, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but, ah, uh, you know, that's just Valentine's Day. That's just is what it is. So every weekend, we basically have kind of the same routine around the house. On Saturdays, I work and I could be working anywhere from I, I might be going in at 11 o'clock in the morning. I might not be going in until six at night. It's, it really just varies on what it is I'm doing any given week. But really, that doesn't change what the boys have to do. Saturday is cleaning day, period. That's when they need to be, especially the older boys can be washing their laundry. That's when they do the deep clean on the floors. You know, they got to sweep and vacuum, even though we have the, the shark robot. They still, that's when they do the deep vacuum in their rooms. That's when, you know, again, with the laundry, they get all their clothes put up and do all that stuff. That is when the major house cleaning gets done. This has pretty much been the way for uh, for for a few years now, I go to work on Saturday. Hey, dad's gone. Let's just get the house clean. It's just an easy thing to do on Saturday. So that on Sunday, when everybody's home, it's not a whole day of yelling and chores. But if you have kids of any age of being able to actually do a damn thing for themselves, you know that they won't. If the kids are capable of doing a thing for themselves, they probably won't want to especially when it comes to cleaning up their own shit and picking up their own rooms. I don't care. I, I've never met a kid who wanted to clean their room. Even when it's the most basic shit, like here, all it is is your clothes on the floor. Pick up your clothes and put it in the laundry basket. If that's all it is, they will fight you for hours not wanting to pick up their shit. They will do everything else in the house except the one thing that they're supposed to be doing because they don't want to do that thing. Uh, case in point, last weekend, it was, st I, I was going in late. It was, I was going in at six o'clock. And so I was home most of the day. And the boys were told, as always, all right, Saturday, cleaning day, get your rooms clean, get everything up, get all your laundry ready so that we can wash clothes. And <laughs> like, okay. And Charlie, Saturday is the one day of the week Charlie is responsible for doing the dishes, which he fights. And this has been the case for like three or four years now. He's been doing the dishes since he was about seven. And he's, yeah, fought us tooth and nail, even though we have a dishwasher. All he has to do is unload the dishwasher and then rinse the new dishes and, like you know, maybe get the brush and scrub off any, you know, stuck on food, you know, rinse down the dishes and load the dishwasher all he has to do might take 30 minutes he will fight with us for three hours and throw a tantrum for three hours about doing it damien was supposed to be doing i forget what the hell he was supposed to be doing standard hey go clean your room you guys get your room clean uh he took it upon himself he's like oh hey i'm gonna go clean your your room and to my wife and i was like her hey, i'm gonna go clean you guys room and your bathroom and your closet so he spent half of the day 
he was cleaning our room, which didn't really need much, but like vacuuming our carpet and in the, and in our closet and cleaning our bathroom and took everything off the counters and wiped everything down and got the Windex and cleaned the mirrors and and put everything back wrong and then went and took our clean clothes baskets because we're just as bad and don't put our clothes away but took our clean clothes baskets and put them all away all right he did a decent enough job at that fine but he put all of our clean clothes away and then took the dirty clothes and went and washed our clothes the problem being that my wife and i have separate laundry baskets for obvious reasons it's just easier that way her stuff stays hers mine stuff stays mine because I, she goes through a lot more clothes between having to change for work every day and then pajamas and then like having, you know, she's got the two sets of clothes every day. I mostly don't because I'm home all day. I'm basically in pajamas until I have to go get the boys, at which point I just put my work clothes on so that I don't have to change again. So I have work clothes and my pajamas. That's it. And so she tends to go through a little bit more clothes. I need, and she has a much more limited supply like most of my clothes you know i'm I'm a guy i have t-shirts and jeans i have a few pairs of jeans that are pretty much interchangeable i have my work pants that are pretty much interchangeable and so my shit's a much smaller pile it takes i don't have to do laundry quite as often and so <laughs> he goes and mixes all of our laundry together to wash oh my God, and i'm just saying like fuck <laughs> Like, but you know what? Thanks for doing our laundry, bud. Appreciate it. And strangle you. <laughs> but he did it. But and like, I, I can't totally yell at him. I'm like, I really, I kind of gave him a, what the hell? I told you not to do our laundry. But he did it anyway. And that was the big thing. The biggest reason, like, I got mad at him over it. It was like, he sat there and spent the day cleaning our room and putting our laundry away and doing all that shit. But the thing, I got mad at him for it. Because I told him not to fucking do it. (laughs) Like, why? Because he was supposed to be cleaning his fucking room. (laughs) He literally spent all day cleaning our room so that he could avoid actually cleaning his own. Because when it was all said and done later in the afternoon and Charlie has finally stopped his bullshit fit and done the fucking dishes. And I'm like, all right, is your all's room clean? And they both fucking melt down. Because, I mean, all day, I was cleaning all day. I was working all day. You could have been cleaning your fucking room. It's like, it's like meltdown throwing a tantrum because they have to clean their room. <laughs> when of their own accord, they spent all day doing other shit that they did. In Damien's case, didn't have to do any of. And in Charlie's case, could have taken 30 minutes, instead took several hours. The fuck? Because they they just do that shit. They would rather do any fucking thing else. On Sunday, they literally both volunteered to go out in the yard and pick up dog poop because they didn't want to clean the rooms. Yeah, they would rather be outside picking up dog shit than cleaning their fucking room. Which really isn't that big a deal. Again, it's pretty much just get all your shit off the floor. They don't have any toys in their room because they, all the toys are in the study and all the toy bins and everything are in there. For the most part, they have their baskets of, ha- of stuffed animals to hang over their beds. All right, Basketball, shoot all the fucking animals into the basket and pick your fucking clothes up off the floor and get your books put away. That's it. That is what cleaning their room takes. I literally do it every fucking day because when the deck, when Destiny, the vacuum, when she runs, uh, there can't be shit on the floor. I can't have clothes and books and shit on the floor. So I have to go in there and pick up their shit every day. And I tell them every day, make sure your floor is clear. I don't care how, what you do really. I don't care if they shove everything in the closet for that matter on during the week, but make sure your floor is clear so that when Destiny goes in your room, it doesn't bog down. She doesn't suck up a sock or something. And I have to go in there and pull her out from under the bed and clear out her fucking intake and then put her back in the exact same position so she doesn't get all fucked up. 
No, just keep the shit off your floor. That's all I tell them. Keep the shit off your floor. But no, they will spend all day fucking fighting and they'll fight with each other. He's not doing this. Ah, he hit me. Dad started hitting me. No, I didn't. Yeah, they fucking do that every fucking day. Every time we tell them to go in their room and do something together. Put your clothes away. Clean your room. Just pick your shit up. It turns into a huge fight and they spend hours not doing the shit and fighting when it could have taken like 20 minutes. I literally takes me about five minutes to straighten up their room every day. And the only reason I I'm irritated by it is the fact that I have to do it. Not my fucking room. Not my room. I have to make sure I don't have, you know, shoes or like, cause I'm a guy and I will come home and I will just like take my pants off, just drop them throw on my pajamas and get in bed because it's four o'clock in the fucking morning when I get home and I just want to go to sleep. But yeah, I was like, I pick up my shit. I make sure my slippers aren't on the floor. I make sure my pants aren't on the floor. Nothing's falling out. There's nothing that I could have left there that will interfere with the vacuum process. Not them. Nope. Hell, even Sam will do that shit. He will go in and be like, dad, I'm straightening up my room. And a lot of it is he will take his shit and he will just shove it in the closet. But on a Tuesday afternoon, I don't care. His floor is clear so that when the vacuum runs, it doesn't suck up a fucking sock. That's all I care about. But yeah, they just, they will, they literally chose to be picking up dog shit rather than just pick up the room for five minutes. Like you're going to spend an hour outside cleaning up the yard instead of five minutes cleaning your room. And after doing that, you would have gotten to play. You've gotten to play video games or watch movies or do whatever the fuck, but instead they spend all their time bitching about it and never actually get to have fun. Yeah. Literally. Again, Damien cleaned our entire room, spent hours cleaning our room, putting away our laundry, doing our laundry, doing all this bullshit to avoid cleaning his own room. Charlie spent all day not doing the dishes. Well, mostly to avoid doing the dishes because he's a brat that way, you know, They literally went out and were picking up dog shit because they still never cleaned their room from Saturday. All to avoid doing something that literally would have taken them 10 minutes max. Especially working together, which they'll never do. Like, seriously? The fuck? Just, just stop. Just fucking stop. Meh. Just clean your room. Your kids like this? I know I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I was totally that kid who would take all of my shit and throw it in the closet. But I also had a giant toy box. We would just take our shit and just dump it in the toy box and everything would go in the toy box and we'd later get in trouble because we'd have dirty clothes in the toy box. But, you know, I had a million toys. We'd dump our, my room would be a mess. It was trashed all the time. And again, maybe once a week we'd have to clean a room. But we'd half-ass the shit out of it. We'd fucking do it. Why? Because mom wouldn't let us out of the room until it was done. But seriously, are, are, do your kids do this shit? Like, do your kids, if you have kids, do they, like, go and do whatever the fuck else they can possibly do to avoid cleaning their room, too? Or is this just, like, some weird Higgins phenomenon? Because <laughs> I, 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 I've done it. I I totally done it, especially like, oh, I'm going to like, oh, yeah, dad, I'm I'm cleaning. <laughs> now that I think about it, I would go clean the fucking dog shit out of the yard because I'd rather be outside doing that. Also, I'd get money for doing that, but I'd get you know, I'd go do that or I'd go mow the yard or go do something else besides what I was supposed to be doing. I'd go do some other chores to avoid cleaning my room. Or avoid the other chores that I was supposed to do. Because, you know, nobody likes doing dishes. I don't care who you are. Nobody likes doing dishes. But I I would rather do anything else besides clean my room. And now apparently my boys inherited this. Is this is this the universal thing or is this just me and my family? Do your kids avoid chores by doing other chores? <laughs> I Tell me, let me know, hit me up on the social medias, let me know what happened. Are your kids like this? If you have kids, if you don't have kids, I'm sorry. I, you can't answer this question, my bad. I don't, I'm not feel. I don't want to exclude you from this, 
did you, were you like this? Fuck, there we go. So I'm not being, excluding you people who don't have kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, did, were you like that when you were a kid? Let me know. Hit me up on the social at odd dad out on, uh, the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, other places as well. Maybe I don't know. Uh, show at odd dad out dot com or in the show notes or on whatever the fuck on your podcast app thingy thing place where you're listening to. Yeah, there. Oh, uh, is it, is it obvious? I'm, I'm half, I'm bullshitting my way through this. All right. It's time to play some promos and I will be right back to wrap things up right after this brick. Hey everyone, this is Tove, host of Gravity Beard, a podcast featuring interviews and discussions on a wide range of topics. In each episode, I'll either interview a special guest or we'll convene our typical Algonquin roundtable of brilliant minds. Occasionally, we'll even be joined by the host of one of your other favorite podcasts. Then every other week, my buddy Adam stops by for an installment of This Week Today. Whatever we do each week, we promise you'll be entertained. You can find Gravity Beard on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else quality podcasts are sold. And you can always find us and other indie pods in the Underdog Podcast community on Facebook. We're also a member of the Podfix Network. Come check us out. Gravity Beard. It's what your ears will want to be listening to. Recommended listening. Hi, I'm Justine, the big gamouche. And I'm Santiago, the the other gamouche. And we're the hosts of Weird With You, a quirky podcast where every Wednesday we discuss a weird topic of conversation for your amusement. Like that time we talked about our unconventional celebrity crushes. Or when we ranted about working in retail hell. There was also some mention of plastic pants, snakes on planes, folklore, and something about beaver anal glands. And every so often, our old pal Chris Walken drops by to answer your questions. Never underestimate the power of a pocket square. It'll hypnotize you. Join us every week for new episodes on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and other podcatchers. And follow us on Twitter at weird underscore with you. Shadow for you! Oh, I hate doing these, I hate doing these, I hate doing these. Weird with you, which I honestly did not feature that long ago. Actually, now I think about it, it's probably a year. But spoilers if you have not listened to this week's Weird with You, but they recently announced that they are going to be ending the show after right about episode 180, which is about a month or so out. Um, not sure why they're going with that number. I guess just round numbers, I guess. But yeah, after episode 180, they're going to be ending weird with you. Um, it sucks. It's such a fun show. I, it's one of those that I, I really love listening to. And they are, if I recall, one of the founding members of the Podfix network, which now that I'm looking back on it, I'm most of, I think the only founding member of the Podfix network that's still there. Is Gravity Beard? Because I don't believe the Epic Film guys are in Podfix anymore. Um, they're still around. They're just, I don't believe they're on Podfix. I could be wrong. Um, more Gooder Than ended last year. And now with Weird With You ending, I'm just like, man, what, what, what's going on? Granted, you know, shows come and go all the time. And especially, you know, an indie podcasts when, you know, we do this all on our own free time. And so it, you know, we can't expect to be able to do it for forever for free. So, you know, life has to come first, you know, and that's, that's, that's always been something that I've been very open about here is the life and family come first. And so if, you know, life something happens, I'm too busy for with work, too busy with family stuff, then podcast is late. We're not coming up. That's what it is. And recently they'd actually dialed back from their weekly Wednesday releases to bi-weekly because life happens. And they finally come to the decision that after a f it's, it's been a couple of years and I'm blanking the exact amount of time, but it's about three years. If they're looking at one, episode 180, that's over three years that they've gone in, on every week and it's just life has gotten too busy. It happens. 
It happens to normal people and it happens to podcasters. Not that podcasters aren't normal people, but you know what I mean. So I was trying to find a sound effect for, you know, pour one out for weird with you. But I also never did that for anybody else. <laughs> but <laughs> it just sucks. I'm not, a, I, I hate, I hate seeing shows that I enjoy go away. I hate seeing shows that I enjoy listening to that I get great entertainment out, especially ones that make me laugh. I hate seeing them go because that's why I listen to podcasts. I, I, uh, that's my enjoyment. That's I like, you know, I'm less, I'm less bugged when it's a big major studio thing. Like, you know, if, if not that I listen to Joe Rogan, but if Joe Rogan decided to quit tomorrow, don't really care. Um, Honestly, if Welcome to Night Vale, at this point, Welcome to Night Vale, although they are technically still an indie podcast, they have gotten so big that at this point, if Welcome to Night Vale announced that this was their final season, it'd suck, but I'm not going to be all broken up about it. I'm not going to be reaching out to them, you know, but I'm not going to be talking so much about it as much as I would like focus, giving an entire segment to uh, the end of More Gooder Than giving an entire segment to weird with you because they have, and they've done so much, so much. There's so much goes into that show between just the weird, the main conversation, the boof, like the cold open conversation because they do like the, so there's the MacGuffin ad for their sponsor every episode. Then there's, so they have to come up with a product, then come up with an ad and record an ad for a product. Then they're just like cold, open, whatever the hell bullshit conversation. And then the actual topic of the show and all that they have to do every week. And they put a lot of work into the show and they've put a lot of work into making a very hilariously, entertainingly weird what the fuck show. And so I'm going to miss them greatly. And so, you know, this one is for you, uh, Justine and Santiago. And maybe I'll be able to reach out to them and get them on the show. I, they're, they're somebody that I've wanted to have on the show. And, you know, knowing that their lives are so busy, they can't even do their own show. I don't know how well I'd be able to get them on mine. But I'm also having a hard time just handling getting guests on here. For my sake, me scheduling the time personally. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But they said it's not going away, going away. So I think they're going to keep the feed going. So you can still go back and listen. But as far as right now, they're not going to be producing any more new shows. We'll see if they if they do keep it alive. I think more. I don't know if more gooder than actually kept it alive or if they actually ended up killing the show. I don't know. But... This one's for you, for Justine and Santiago, for Weird With You. I'm going to miss you guys. And again, they're not going, it's not gone yet. They've still got a few, they've still got a few more episodes to go, but I'm, I'm definitely going to miss the show. It, it was seriously a bummer hearing that announcement when I was listening to them last night. So go listen to them now. If if you deal with my bullshit and you didn't listen to them after my last feature, go check out Weird With You because, I mean, they're just weird. That's just it. They're weird and funny and silly and just utterly ridiculous. And so go listen to them now while you can because I don't know if the feed's going to die in a month or so. So go listen now. Uh, weird With You, you know where, on all the podcast places. Links in the show notes as always. But that is going to do it for me for this week. Thank you, as always, for putting up with my random whatever the fuck. Remember to go to odddadoutpodcast.com to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast places or leave a comment. Hit me up on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at odddadout. And special thank you to all my Patreon supporters, Chris from Play Comics, Kate from Ignorance Was Bliss, Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts, and Lisa and Sam from I Shake My Head. You guys are awesome. Join the Oddballs Facebook group. Of course, I've got a link there for everything or in the show notes. You know it's there. I tell you every week. But until next time, Oddballs, thank you and good night. Good night.